What's going on, people? Welcome back to Love of John Sinclair TV. Back again tonight. I've got Sabrina, AC Milan fan and from Canada. Sabrina, hi to you. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, not my favorite circumstances, but I'm glad to be here. Fantastic, fantastic. And um, I've always wanted to get you on and uh, it's been about a few days. So I finally got you on. You've got a busy life, haven't you? Yep. Got an 11 month old, so never stops. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Get him, a black, get him a black and white top. That should be easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you. So, yeah, we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how good is Sandro Tonali. Um, obviously, Newcastle brought him from Milan for 55 million quid. It's not officially announced yet. It could be tomorrow, it could be Tuesday. We know it's a six year contract, and there's a lot of things going on in Milan. and they did not took it very well. Yes, I mean, I think the orders had a major part of it. I think Maldini had to play the play the part to it as well. And because obviously he left and, you know, players wasn't very happy. Newcastle took advantage of my book. How did it take it at Sabrina in Milan? It was, I mean, we thought, as fans, we thought that somebody would be sold. We At first we thought we would lose Leo, uh, but then he signed his contract right before Maldini was shown the door. So we thought, okay, maybe we could keep him for one year and maybe someone will come after Teo or Mignon. Uh, I don't think anybody within the fan base was expecting Tonali, especially because you'll hear the all the time boyhood fan, boyhood fan. But the love that he has for Milan is incredible. And just the way that he joined, taking a pay cut, and then after a year reduced his salary in order to make his loan deal permanent. So finding out that he was leaving was a huge shock after we already went through the disaster and the PR nightmare of Maldini being shown the door. Yeah, absolutely not good at all because Paolo Maldini is a legend at the club and he's won everything as well. And I mean, I feel sorry for the Milan fans. I love Italian football as well. And for me personally, if I was a Milan fan, I'd be disappointed as well. The owners haven't covered themselves in the glory. They saw great money's going to come. Do you think Italian football now has got problems when it comes to the oh. financial side? I mean, the problems have been there for years. Um, there is a lot of mismanagement um, within the league, the, the FIGC. There's been problems with the rights. I think once when Italian football was so popular, especially in the 90s, I think they just thought themselves invincible and didn't think that they needed to fix things. So if you, I don't know if, if, your listeners know, but the infrastructure in the stadiums in Italy is absolutely terrible. You have really yeah. old crumbling stadiums. You have a few teams that'll have a new stadium like Juventus, Sassuolo yeah. and the like, but uh, in other ways, it's, it's a sad state because the municipalities are being difficult. So even if a team wants to build a new stadium, they're having trouble there. Um, the league does an awful job at selling the rights. Last year, I think, I um, mm. can't remember which market it was. I think it was in the, the Asian market or the Arabic market. They sold the rights the day before the season started. So there's a lot of problems and that's trickling down to the teams as well. And then you also have the teams facing a lot of issues with FFP. Um, there's been Milan have faced it, Inter, Roma, these kinds of clubs that are just trying to get out of a hole that they were put in because of FFP with UEFA. So they've had the restraints put on them and now football's moving fast and there's a ton of problems and it's really, really hard for Italian teams to be competitive. And we're seeing the result of it that it's, it's unfortunately becoming a feeder league. As much as that breaks my heart, we're mm -hmm. seeing a lot of talents being discovered in the Italian league. And after one or two good seasons, they're, they're leaving for, somewhere else and it's it, they see this as a stepping stone which is it's sad yeah we're built to mancini's comment he said that um tonali going to newcastle is not good for syria at all whatsoever it's a big problem that's his words i'm not gonna have to kind of agree with him because look you mentioned about the stadiums as well it's crumbling i've been to a couple of states in italy i've been to milan i've been to bologna i've been to napoli I'd be to Falls and Nordi, and Falls and Nordi stadium is beautiful, by the way. I can't lie. It's a beautiful, brown, newly built stadium. And I've been to a couple, and I'll tell you what, I mean, some of the stadiums, believe you and me, it is absolutely sorted out very quickly because, because if you want to host the World Cup in Italy in the future years, it won't even pass. 
I think what they think with that is that it's like it was in the past. You get the tournament and then you invest in the infrastructure, but it's not like that anymore. You have to have the infrastructure or the promise of the infrastructure, then you land the tournament. So the bureaucracy in Italy with not only just, you know, municipalities and whatnot, but the league itself is is just doing a number on on all of these teams. Yeah. Look, good over to get sort of that very soon because it's is cracking for tournaments as well when they get it right. But unfortunately, it needs um, sort of that very quickly. Well, says Sabrina. Let's go on to um to Nali. Um, we do a scouting report. Obviously, we signed in for 55 million quid. It's not um, it's not it's gonna be official tomorrow, Tuesday. So I'm gonna share the screen and check out on his record. And I looked at his record myself, and it looks really, really good. And the stats and stats and facts as well. And we got here um if you look at his record, this is Sanjay Tanari's record. This is his, um, last season. Talk about last season based on that. If you look at it like um, two goals this season, scored seven assists, nine goal contributions as well. And he's got seven yellow cards. He loves his booking, doesn't he? And it's better assist. And there's a not bowling ball as well. And if you go down a bit as well, um, 34 games played last season, 83%. And we're going to go match start to 30. And when you come down for it as well, he scored like so two goals, 55%, 76% goal involvement, and also as well, we're 71. So, so far, look at those record. It's very impressive. Yeah, and last year wasn't really a great season for Milan. Um, that World Cup break kind of messed us up, and we had a ton of injuries. So I wouldn't even judge him too harshly on the stats from last season. Mm -hmm. um, he also, we lost... Uh, the season prior, we lost Frank Kessie and he was kind of, Tonali was trying to get into a rhythm with a midfield partner. We lost Frank Kessie and then his midfield partner was uh, Ismail Benacer. Benacer had a lot of injuries this year too. So he was kind of just, he's, you can kind of call him a jack of all trades because he will do what the manager needs him to do. And he is a good loyal soldier. So last year probably wasn't the best for judging him on. Yeah his abilities because he was constantly with a different, different formation, different midfield partner. So what you will get from him for the most part, I would say is a defensive midfielder. He'll play in front of the defense. He'll help out defensively. Um, I know he does ha have a lot of bookings, but he, he definitely got better. His first season was awful when he was finding his footing. It was um, a lot of red cards, a lot of yellow cards, but mm -hmm. Once he got his footing and he knew what he was supposed to do, he really contributed well to defense. Um, but then he's also, if the game warrants it, if the manager needs him to be, he can switch into that offensive threat as well, mm -hmm. where you won't see him going to the goal and, and taking a lot of shots himself, where mm -hmm. he will he will definitely be that link up in between, you know, the midfield to the, the forwards, the defense to the midfield and that kind of thing. And he is, he's, ex, he's, if you, you've probably heard the comparisons to Pirlo and he will himself say, people are only saying that because of my hair, I'm more like Gattuso, but I yeah. think he's a really good combination of the two because he is really good on set pieces. Yeah. Um, Milan are awful on set pieces. So again, if you want to mm. see a little bit, if you watch the uh, under 21 euros, he was, that's the kind of set pieces you're looking for from him. If he has players that can get on the end of a cross, he will be really dangerous. He scored a few free kick goals as well. So to use him that way would be excellent, but also to have him have that grit. He'll dig in. He's not going to let his man pass him easily. He's going to stick up for his teammates. He is, he's, he's pretty much the full package when it comes to skill and aggression. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, i Absolutely well said. I'll have to agree with you there. And um, can you explain for the viewers, right? We know what it is, like Regista. Can you explain to the viewers what Regista means? Oh, I know what it is, but I want you to explain it to Newcastle fans. It's like um like a an orchestra, like a playmaker. So he's he is he's looking everywhere, he's seeing everything, and he's not just gonna say, Okay, I gotta stick to this player, I gotta do this. He is going to try and pick the ball play it over there. He knows he had Teo Hernandez on the left that could feed it to Liao. He'll try and do that. He'll get in an open position. Like he is, 
he's the conductor. He's going to orchestrate things for a team, especially if that's what the manager is going to ask of him. But if the manager says, you stick on this player, don't let this player buy you, he's going to do that too. So he he will he is really good at dictating play if if that's what you guys are needing of him. Fantastic. Newcastle fans like me, there's your explanation, Regista. Um, look at this assistive pass and chance creation. It's very impressive. I can see that. 93% of assists, expected assists in game 94, 73% of passing and successful passes as well. 95% of the key passes, which is absolutely fantastic. Crosses, E89. Successful crosses, 86. These are percentage, by the way. And if you look at their cross complete rate, is okay. That's not, not but that's, I wouldn't say that that's his fault. Um, Milan as a team just have a real issue with set pieces. So, and, and any kind of crosses into the box. So he'll put those balls in. It's just a matter of Milan players can't get onto the end of that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't give him too much flack for that stat. No, that's fine. That's no problem there. We said about his bookings, then he said uh, lots of yellow cards, been red colour a few times. And um, yeah, this is not great. Defensive work, I think you just touched on their defensive work as well. I mean, I think Tonali for me, um, you know, he loves his passing, his passability is fantastic for me, and he can defend, in my opinion. And look at that tackling as well, it's important in midfield. What do you think of this tackling? Do you think, it's, I know he's got foot in that, can he be clean in the tackle? For sure, for sure. He it, he's still young, obviously. He still he has that aggression. He has that real drive to prove himself. So if the there's a big occasion, sometimes he might lose it a little bit and and be a little bit sloppy. But overall, from when he joined Milan, where he had a lot of issues with just being too reckless, he's definitely cleaned up that part of his game a lot. And I think in that respect, he's only gonna grow. Brilliant stuff. And trophies and titles. Um, um, so Sandro um, being a winner of Brescia, um, so it be champions 2018-2019 season with that on loan. Then he won um, second place in the Euro under 19s and he has been second place in so at 20 in 21. They won the title um the season after that. And I believe was he player of this player young player of the season in LA? Was he the player of the season in uh, Milan or uh well we had one of them. Yeah, he was one of them. Uh, Rafael Leao. The, the yeah. Serie A does some some strange things. It's a quirky league. So Rafael Leao was the MVP of the season, but he wasn't the under-23 player of the season. I'm pretty sure that was Tonali. But I guess, in a sense, maybe they didn't want to give two things to the same player, even though Leao could have essentially got both. But he was absolutely crucial in that title run. Um, for the most part, stayed healthy. I think maybe one one or two injuries, but really minor, just like a muscle strain or the manager's just trying to conserve him for a more important game. Um, but overall, extremely healthy too. And um, a very, very pivotal for our, our title win in 2022. I mean, I'll look at the, um, how he's going to play in the mid, in midfield three in Newcastle. I mean, you've got Bruno Gimaraj in there, Joel Linton, Joel Willock, Sean Longstaff, also, you got a few midfielders out there as well. I mean, Tanadi, I'm sure he's going to start, but I don't know if um, Eddie is going to play him every week because you've got Joel Linton and Bruno G as well. How will he fit in in the midfield field of Newcastle United? We know how good Joel Linton is. We know how good Bruno G is. Will he fit in or will it take time to get the, the pace of the man to the Premier League? Yeah, it'll definitely take time. Be be patient with him because when he joined Milan, he had already played in the Serie A for one year with Brescia. However, it's a it's a it's a different feeling when you go from a club like Brescia, who's just promoted, where expectations are very low, and then you're coming to a storied club like Milan, especially for him that that was his boyhood club. So the first season, there were a lot of fans that were thinking, "Why did we get him? Get rid of him? Send him back? Don't spend the money." But if you just have that little bit of patience with him for him to get his footing, because obviously we know the Premier League is a lot faster paced than the Serie A. And he definitely has the fitness to keep up. Yeah. But I think moving, because he grew up in the Lombardia region, which is where Milan is. So yeah. I think it was, he was at Brescia, I went to Milan, his family and friends were still around. So it was a more comfortable environment. So I would say it might just take him a little time to get settled, new country, 
um, new, new team, new league, everything. So the first season might not live up to the expectations or the price tag, but if you stick with him, if you show the faith in him, I think he will fight every game to get that starting spot and he will be a good soldier. Your manager says, do this, play here, play there, be more offensive, be more defensive. He's going to do it and he's not going to complain. You don't mm -hmm. have to worry about him, get, you know, making comments and in interviews or things like that. He is extremely loyal, head down, works and will fight for his spot. Um, he's going to learn, he's going to start learning to talk to Jordy. <laughs> Jordy, like, see what I like. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I think he does know a little bit of English already, so at least he at least will have that little bit, but um, you know, in Italy too, there's there's dialects with in every single region, so I think he'll understand that aspect of it that, you know, it's not it's it's a little bit different everywhere you go, the the regions are all different. I think that's yeah. that's true in every country. So I think he'll he'll get the hang of it. Right. He's going to get us some um, woolly scarves and woolly hats and fake jackets <laughs> in November, December, January, February time. It's going to be cold. And if you lost the beaches up the North East, you've got South Shields, <laughs> you've got Whitney Bay, you've got the North Formlin course as well. If he likes to the beach as well, is he a beachy person or is he loves a fashionable, I mean, in a fashionable city? But um, if you go to um, to Eldon Square, the Metro, he got some um, fashion there as well. So it may not be yeah. like Milan, but I tell you what, it's still a shopping center. Everyone's going to enjoy that. Yeah. And um, he's, he's a pretty, not, I wouldn't say private, but he's pretty quiet on social media. Yeah. Um, but the kind of person he is that he doesn't, you know, he's not going to brag or show or put on a show for anyone, but he and his girlfriend last year had gone on vacation to New York city. And one of the, members of the fan club there, the Milan fan club of New York City, happened to run into him and said, you know, if you guys don't mind, we'd love to have you come and have like a dinner with the club and some of the members. And on his own vacation, his personal time with his girlfriend, they went, they had a whole evening with the club and the members, they took pictures, he signed autographs. And it, that wasn't set up by the club at all. He just did that because he saw, hey, these people want to spend time with me. They want to get to know me. And he did it. So I think he'll be really down to earth. And whatever the city has to offer, he's going to he's going to enjoy it. And he's going to make the best of it. Yeah, let's hope so. And um, he seems a young lad. He seems switched on as well for me. And I hope that he settles up in Newcastle. And we could do another Italian player in as well. And um yeah, we've got to see what happens when he walks away. But um, what are the media saying in Italy? Like, like a Sata della Sport, what are they saying? That's Milan based. What are they saying about about the city? I haven't seen one newspaper come out and said that Newcastle is the wrong club for him because he's got no history. And I think that's a slap in the face for some that of the is. media because at the end of the day, right? I mean, we have some great players play for Newcastle United. Tino Aspila play for us as well. Lon Robert, David Ginola, right? Um, Patrick Clyburn played for a season. We had some wonderful players. Look at it we've got now. We've got two Brazilian internationals loving Newcastle life, yeah? Absolutely mm -hmm. loving Newcastle life. Sven Botman loves it as well. But for me... Former Milan target. <laughs> yes, he certainly is. We're well, up from the top on you now because... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I honestly, I honestly thought he was going to go to Milan. But, I mean, I have to pay 100 quid because I said he's going to go to Milan. And I have to pay 100 quid to um, the Newcastle Food Bank. And I lost the bet. But I'm glad Sven Botman's here. I think you could have done with him, by the way, to more at the back. I think those two would have won your title. But at the end of the day, right, I mean, the press in Milan said, right, Newcastle, I think it's a slap in the face yeah and i agree with that i mean like no offense to any clubs that are near the bottom near the drop but if he were to go to a club that was fighting relegation then i would say that's the wrong move for him because he's a young player he's about to enter the prime of his career and he has extreme promise but for to go to a club like newcastle you guys are going to be playing in the champions league so where I understand what the press and Mancini was kind of saying with yeah. Serie A losing a talent like that, that's yeah. definitely, definitely sucks. But I had my friends on the Italian football podcast, uh, Carlo and Nima, were kind of saying it's actually like 
it's Syria is what it is. And I don't think we're ever going to get back. But if we have Italian players that are playing in the Premier League, which is undeniably the best league in the world right now, he, they're going to be playing Champions League football. This could only be a benefit for the Italian national team, which is kind of the only thing that we can try and look forward to right now. Yeah. Because he's going to be playing with the best players in the best league, also playing in the Champions League. And I think that the people in the media that are sour about it are just sour because it's it's a negative thing for the Serie A. So I get it. That's their job. They're mainly reporting on the Serie A. They want the Serie A to do the best. But the way I see it, I'm heartbroken. I wanted to name my son after Tonali. Um, it, it's, it's, it broke my heart, especially oh, after seeing you. Maldini leave. <laughs> but I'm glad he's going. I'm glad he's going to get paid the way he's going to get paid. Good for him. Set yourself up. Set your family up for life. And play in the Champions League. And it seems like you guys have a really exciting project. And he's yeah. a young player. So I think to grow with all these guys, to be successful. And then if if he's, if that happens for him, other players, Italian players follow in those footsteps. It could be a good thing for the Italian national team. Because you don't need all your players to play in your country in order to be successful. Like that's... That's not a thing with an, with national teams. You know, yeah. it, it, it they don't play on the same team in the league. So it's all a matter of getting the best experience while you're out there with your club and then coming and translating that to your national team. So I, I think it's, it is a slap in the face to make comments about Newcastle because in the end of the day, what does it matter what your history is? Well said. Well yeah. said. You're playing the game. You're competing at the highest level. And that's all yeah. that matters. Yeah. yeah, what it is, right, we go back 18 months ago, all right, I mean, um, my cash was owner of Newcastle United, yeah, for the first 15 seasons, we absolutely suffered a lot, he didn't want to spend big money, he wanted to buy um, players on the cheap and sell them on the profit, he was happy finishing 17th place every single season, I mean, could you imagine if my cash is sanctioned a £55 million move for Tonali? Definitely not, yeah. But our owners come in, right? And man, Steve and the PIF came in, PC partners, 18 months, right? They had, right? To come in from Saudi, right? Eddie Howe took mm -hmm. over 18 months ago, right? And he's done a magnificent job. He loves playing young players. He plays play football the right way. And also what I'm trying to say is, it's just the players loves Eddie. And they play in different positions. They love playing for him. So now they fit in very well, right? But, 18 months he got his Champions League. Yeah, that is amazing because they didn't want Newcastle being the Champions League because they didn't want us upsetting the big six. Yep. Yeah, of course. They were happy for London clubs in the two mm -hmm. Manchester clubs, Liverpool, right? And Newcastle finished fourth this season, right? It was no surprise because I think we deserve to be top four because mm -hmm. the way we played football, the way we played, and they know what it is, right? I mean. They expect us to spend big, big money. It's not going to work that way, in my opinion. We haven't got much to play with, but we got 25 um, play, um, playing squad in the team. So I know people's going to say, uh, don't overload yourself. We have to get rid of one before we get someone in. Yeah. But it's a hard one. Tonight is going to come in. Like I said, he's going to fit in really well. I think because he's a quality player. I've always been yep. a Sandro. I really have. Do you think, in your opinion, be a, he'll be a success in Newcastle United? Yes, I do. And and the thing, because a lot of people have pointed out that Italian players, for the most part, haven't done well when they've gone abroad. And I think that's also has to do with the culture, because everything's very family centric. You don't really go too far away from your family. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe that's why players tend to struggle. But knowing that the, the person that Sandro is, that he is not going to just moan and cry. He's going to go somewhere. He's going to give it his all. And if it doesn't work out, I'll be very surprised because I think he's, he, the way I tell you that this kid loved <laughs> Milan, for him to be leaving, he <laughs> has to be motivated. This, he has, he wrote letters to Santa and different saints when he was a kid <laughs> saying, please one day, let me play for Milan. So for him to say at the end of the day, okay, I'm going to leave. He has a, he has a good reason for doing that. And he has the drive to do anything it takes to be successful. Yeah. So if if he's not a success, I'll be extremely surprised. But give him that one year. Just give him give him a chance. 
Uh, but he'll definitely reward your loyalty. Absolutely. I mean, all the people and knows me on, on social media and those I love Italian football and I got every faith in this kid to be a huge success. I was surprised that he um, chosen us to come to Newcastle. But money talks, money walks at the end of the day. Milan is not that sort of money down at this moment in time. But um, going on to Milan, I mean, have you got any targets as well? I mean, I heard that um, Theo Hernandez name has been linked to Newcastle as well. But that hasn't um, come, hit, the, hit the ground running yet. But for me personally, I don't think it's going to happen. I think he either go to, say, Milan or probably go to Let's Call Madrid. Any latest on Fiona Nandi? Well, I think with these new owners, um, they're American. Uh, our last ones were too. But they really want to adopt this money ball philosophy that mm. they made is more popular in baseball. Um, but it's not really something that's going to bring you glory. I think the point of this ownership is make some money, build a stadium, get, and then eventually sell the club, make a bit of money. So for them, if they can get the fee they want for Hernandez the same way they did for Tonali, they'll sell. But I think they valued Hernandez at at least 80 million. And I just, euros, and I don't see Atletico Madrid paying that. I, I honestly don't see anyone outside of the Premier League paying that. So I feel like if Hernandez stays... It'll be a mix of the fee offered wasn't high enough, but he also has um, his partner and his uh, young son are living, are Italian and living here in, in Italy. So that I see would maybe the only reason why he wouldn't make a move, but mm -hmm. he is a high value player. And although Milan doesn't need to make sales, no. the way that they're seeing the business is like with this Tonali fee. Okay, we'll sell him and then we'll get two or three other players in his place. If they sell Hernandez, same kind of thing. So it, the fee has to be there. It has to be at least 80. And then it just depends on whether he wants to uproot his family. Yeah. Well, I was going to say one more question before I let you go. I mean, and thank you so much for coming on anyway, because I've always wanted to get you on, be sure. Um, can you like to tell all Newcastle United fans what to expect of Denali and what's best for him? Expect him to leave it all out on the pitch. This is not a player who's going to go through the motions. Even if he's struggling on the day, you know, we all have the days where it just, it's just not the brain and the body are not talking. But even if he is having one of those games, he will never stop. He will do everything he can to help his team in whichever way he can. He's not going to cause drama, whether it's in the locker room or out in the media. He is going to work. He's going to do his best. And I think he will endear himself to the fans and and everyone at the club as well. So it's it's a really special player that you guys are getting. Sabrina, thank you very much for coming on the show tonight, talking about Tenali. And where can we find you on your socials, please? Where can people can find you on your socials? Uh, you can find me on Twitter if uh, you haven't reached your limit. <laughs> at uh, Sabri yeah, B10. Yeah. Um, yes. yeah, hopefully that limit stops because it's... Um, yeah, it's a joke, isn't it? Yeah, it's a thing as football fans, it's a great way for us all to connect and talk about players and, you know, competitions and stuff like that. So mainly talking about Milan, um, Italian national team, and definitely I'm going to be... I don't I will, don't support any other team but Milan, but I'm definitely going to be following Newcastle because I love Tonali and I want to see him do well with you guys and yeah. and hope that it works out for you guys back in the Champions League. That's super exciting. Champions tough. Have you ever heard of this term called how we are the lads? No. No? When we, when we sign off, we, we got to say together how we are the lads as well. When we, when I said, as always, we've both got to say how we are the lads to sign off. But um, guys, <laughs> if, you like, if you like the video, if you like what you see, please um, give it a like and a subscribe. Also, do follow Sabrina on Sabri, Sabri10. And um, if you've got any comments about Sir Tonali, just leave them, drop in the comment section down below and just give them Sabrina's comments as well, how good she was. I thought she was fantastic. And guys, um, thanks for watching. And as always, <laughs> oh, I, I can't. I'm going to say Forza Milan. I'm going to say that. Oh, I like you. <laughs> as always, I'm weird, lads. <laughs> Take care.